गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग मैम लेट अस रेज्यूम फ्रॉम आवर यस्टरडेस क्लास वी वर लर्निंग प्रोबेबिलिटी एट एप्रोक्सीमेटिंग करेक्ट लर्निंग and then we have to now understand reinforcement learning reinforcement learning is uh, another kind of learning method where uh, for every right answer a reward is given to the agent agent here is Uh, AI system or any decision making system. It receives a reward or feedback. It could be positive or negative for the actions that it performs at the end of the uh, sequence of steps. Example is when. Uh, when a small child is uh, uh, not going to school uh, her mother uh, would probably tell her to go to school so that uh, she would give her a chocolate so what is that chocolate that is a reward why that reward is given because uh, mother wants her child to go to um, school that going to school is the action of the child when you compare uh, uh, in ai system any decision making software or hardware uh, is known as an agent it's like a child and um, the mother uh, is uh, like uh, we humans or uh, another system that is in working that uh, decision making system uh, who would be giving some kind of reward or feedback that is reinforcement learning further the next kind of uh, learning is inductive learning inductive learning is the process of learning where a system learns by example an example is given uh, this uh, new system the 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 one which is learning will uh, will take a look at the example that is given to it and uh, it uh, uh, tries to induce a general rule from the set of observed instances for example there if there is a child who is not able to uh create a alphabet chart to that child the teacher will uh, show an example of another child who is able to build it so this first child would uh, look at the one who is building and then this is like an example to this first child and this first child would learn how the second one is building the alphabet uh, uh, model or whatever uh, if uh, any activity what a child is not able to do an example would be given in order to perform inductive learning 
there is an inductive bias which is used to generalize beyond the specific training examples for instance when we need constraints or biases to determine what f is the best okay which f is the best means out of uh, several functions f is the function which which is uh, learning something uh, new which f is the best out of several functions that is uh, determined by going through the constraints or the biases um for 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 example if uh, again let us take a uh, child analogy if every child will have his or her own constraints for example if an activity is performed where a child has to eat a certain um food item for that activity teacher should know whether there is any child who is allergic to that particular food item if a child is allergic to that food item child is not given it therefore here um, constraints have to be identified later from among several functions that that have been uh, potentially generated based on the uh, constraints an inductive bias would allow users to choose one function over others that is inductive bias mm. as an analogy out of several eatables the one which is more suitable for a child is picked up and given to it given to him or her by the teacher based on the bias or the constraint inductive learning framework is constructed by pre processing raw input data from sensors what are sensors example of sensors are camera uh or any other sensing uh, mechanism or device any other device that could uh, examine the environment and could uh, extract the features or the property of the environment that is sensor if if a robot is there this robot would uh, humanized robot robot would see at the environment or the world around it by using the cameras okay there will be cameras in the eyes that are fitted those are sensors and obtaining feature vector uh, this this robot would uh, extract the images of its environment of its surroundings and then uh, try to understand uh, that by looking at different properties or features of it this is uh, knowing about the surroundings um by obtaining the data from the sensors this one is uh, inductive learning deductive learning is the next kind of learning method 
which involves working on already existing facts and knowledge and deducing new knowledge. How to deduce new knowledge? Consider that you know Python programming language and you are aware of its decision making statements and loops. You know that it has got two kinds of loops, for loop, while loop. It has got decision making statements like if, uh, if, if else, if else if ladder, nested if. Based on this uh, knowledge, if you are asked to display or print the multiplication table of a given number, uh, what you can do is based on the existing knowledge, what knowledge you have that you can use a while loop, you can say while i less than 11 uh, before uh, the loop initializing i to be 1 and before that um, you are taking the number from user uh, you prompt the user through input uh, box, prompt box, and input int of input enter in uh, number, and uh, within the within the loop, you say that n n is equals to. Uh, uh, you can directly print uh, of n equal to comma n into i. Uh, or n n e uh, no rather you uh, just n into i you can print or uh, you can go for uh, n into i equal to n into i. This, this is the new knowledge that you have derived from the existing knowledge. This is something known as deductive learning, where you build upon the existing knowledge to derive new knowledge present in the system. In this loop, looping and uh, other uh, basic concepts of programming language, it lies how to uh, create a new knowledge, which is a, a multiplication table. Another example would be, if you know that when it uh, is uh, cloudy, if you see dark clouds in the sky, you know that it, it might rain. Uh, apparently, it rains 99% of the time or 95% of the time. Whenever it is a uh, uh, dark cloud uh, available in the sky. So what do you do then? If you look at the sky and find dark clouds, you immediately conclude that uh, it is going to rain, so you plan accordingly. It is going to rain is the new knowledge that you have derived from the existing knowledge. You have existing knowledge that if it is cloudy, it rains. And this is deductive learning. Deductive learning uh, could be done through probability based learning, which is also known as Bayesian learning. It is a form of learning that treats the problem of building hypotheses as a particular case of the problem for making predictions. And uh, uh, in this kind of learning process, probabilities of various hypotheses are estimated. Um, now today, uh, 
there is a meeting okay uh, to um, to come up with a plan of uh, lockdown from uh, day after tomorrow so what is the probability that lockdown would be extended for the same timings the probabilities let us take 0.3 what is the probability that time would be extended let us take that probability is 0.6 what is the probability that uh, lockdown would be totally um, eliminated it 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 it, it, it could be 0.1 these are the probabilities assigned for various outcomes of the meeting and why i am saying that uh, uh, 0.6 which is the highest probability assigned to uh, the extension of uh, uh, lockdown with the relaxation of timing i have a um, uh, base for that what is the base the base is that i know um, the cases are uh, declining because of that there is a chance of um, increasing the time because of that that is the justification why i am assigning this probability therefore in a system uh, which is uh, built through bayesian learning probabilities of various hypotheses are estimated and predictions are made using the posterior probabilities of the hypothesis and so uh, uh, the, the prior probabilities would be probability for the number of cases probability for the extension of the lockdown probability for extension of time probability for not extension of time probability for unlocking um lifting of the um lock lockdown completely all these have got some prior probabilities and based on these prior probabilities you estimate the posterior probability uh, through this new knowledge could be derived uh, there is another method which is known as adaptive uh, dynamic programming this is a kind of reinforcement learning and it works by solving the utility equation using the dynamic programming algorithm you might have learned about dynamic programming uh, in that dynamic programming uh, uh, it, it, a solution is uh, created by um, combining various sub solutions and that uh, mechanism would be uh, leveraged to solve the problem of deductive learning and uh, the method that is uh, employed is reinforcement learning by using dynamic uh, programming uh, algorithm this essentially involves designing that approximates dynamic programming in the general case you know approximating approximating means given so many options available uh, you come up with the one with the uh, that uh, that uh, essentially uh, or effectively uh, done the solution that, that could uh, easily find the solution uh, that could uh, actually find the right solution okay that uh, and it approximates optimal control over time in a noisy non linear environment in noisy means when there is a noise present disturbance uh, and non linear environments
okay that is uh, about deductive learning furthermore the learning could be done in an un unsupervised manner to the concept of clustering ma'am hmm? prem and uh, nandini asking to join the class ma'am okay Uh, Prem, try tell them to try to join again. Yes, ma'am. Madhukar? Yes, ma'am. Are they joining? Ma'am? Uh, have they joined? No, ma'am, not yet. Because if uh, we start with the presentation again, uh, they can't join.
மேம் பிரேமிஸ் ஜாயின் Uh, okay so the thing is that um, because i am uh, presenting the slides it is difficult to uh, allow and i will not know also if anyone is trying to join clustering it is uh, another method uh, like uh, classification or supervised learning uh, this method belongs to unsupervised class where uh, uh where learning process continues without using any labels clustering is defined as the process in which a process in which data or objects are arranged into groups in a manner that all members of a group are similar in some way when you are given uh, consider an analogy where uh, children small children three years children are given different objects of different colors the child has to uh, create groups or uh, clusters or segments like this different baskets are given where they have to place all the objects uh they they can be any object belonging to same color into one basket they should put different uh, uh, objects having same color in one basket and different objects having um different uh, means same color so let us take an example of red green blue if there is uh, uh, five items of red four items of green and uh, eight items of blue they are mixed these items or objects are mixed up and they are placed in front of the children what each one of them have, uh, has to do they have to pick an object of red color and place in this red basket what is this task this task is nothing but grouping the objects into different classes such that each class is having a same property what is the same property each class would have that their color is same all the, all the different objects uh some objects would be uh, soft toys some objects would be blocks some objects would be um, some characters cartoon characters all these are different uh, although these are three uh, different uh, classes of objects but then what is the common uh, similarity or what is the common thing uh, uh, among them which is color so based on the color you are grouping them this is known as clustering how is clustering performed data items are given uh 
or uh, uh, we can say that take an example of student data set in student data set uh, we have student roll number student name student uh, date of birth marks um, now uh, they, these uh, data records are uh, let us take there are there are the, uh, 800 records total 800 records these 800 records have to be grouped into different clusters based on what uh, attribute they could be clustered based on date of birth or based on marks or even based on name uh, all the names that begin with a are grouped in one cluster another one begin with B, another cluster. Like that, you will get total 26 clusters. Or, based on date of birth, if you are uh, categorizing them, uh, it could be all the students who are born in the month of January or uh, born in February, so 12 clusters you get. Or based on marks, it could be done all students who have scored A plus grade, A grade, B plus grade, B grade. Suppose that uh, you have uh, six grades, C grade and F, F, F means fail. So uh, these 800 records could be uh, clustered, could be grouped into six different uh, categories based on marks like that or marks or grade like that when a data set is given the records are grouped into multiple clusters which are similar in nature uh, objects within the cluster are similar objects between the clusters are dissimilar and then uh, clustering algorithms may be broadly classified into different categories. First one is exclusive clustering, where objects are grouped in an exclusive way. Uh, in other words, uh, if a certain object belongs to a definite cluster, it, then it cannot be included in any other cluster. Mm. how this could be explained example you take an example of e-commerce uh, website uh, customers data consider that uh, that website is grouping the customers based on uh, their shopping patterns Suppose if there is one item which is purchased only by single customer, with a, a, an, an item has been launched, it is possible, right? A new phone is launched or a uh, mobile is launched like that. Uh, uh, different items are launched. Consider one item that was launched and purchased by one customer. And that customer uh, is not included in any other uh, group because it has got a distinguishing feature, a unique characteristic. It is exclusive because it has purchased uh, because it has purchased one uh, Uh, one uh, uh, item that, that was not purchased by anyone else. That is known as exclusive clustering. We, although they, there might be uh, just one object in that uh, group, but it would be created. That is exclusive. Overlap, cl overlapping cl cluster means uh, where uh, 
an object could belong to multiple uh, classes or multiple groups or multiple clusters how that is done there is a cluster of those uh, uh, customers who purchase more than um, 500 rupees every month and they this is one way of clustering another way is uh, customers who are purchasing more than five items so a, a customer could belong to this category and this category both okay so uh, uh, this each point uh, each point means each customer when it uh, when it is a part of a data set it is uh, referred to as a point so each point may belong to two or more clusters okay it is possible that uh, one point means one customer would be belonging to two or more uh, or uh, let us take this for customers who purchase 500 every month and also customer who purchase uh, uh, for 10,000 rupees per year okay so the, both the clusters some some of the points would be belonging that is overlapping means one point is included in both clusters hierarchical clustering means this type of clustering is based on union between two nearest clusters hierarchical clustering is like this um, it is created at different levels this is like hierarchical clustering all the customers uh, that stay in habits then all the customers that stay uh, in um, Bashirba and together all the customers that stay in uh, a particular uh, uh, region okay and then all the customers that are staying in um, a higher level region so if you are dividing based on the regions you get uh, this kind of hierarchical clusters uh, later when it is required you can um, merge these two clusters to form uh, a new cluster that includes all the customers belonging to two different regions um, or two different areas. This is clustering. And the algorithms that are used uh, to perform clustering are k means algorithm, first one. And there is another method known as fuzzy C means. These two belong to uh, clustering algorithm category. Next, support vector machine. This is a very important uh, algorithm that performs classification of data by constructing n-dimensional hyperplane. What, what is hyperplane? Hyperplane is, in simple words, it is a line. When you have data, data can be uh, plotted okay or uh, uh, in a uh, yeah you can map the data on a 2d space map the data on 2d space so here uh, if you have a one dimension and here you have another dimension let us take this x-axis this one y-axis 
uh, there are points these are known as points data points that belong to the Okay, these are the uh, data points, cross and dot. And then uh, you you can separate them by by a line. This line is known as a hyperplane in SVM. In support vector machine, this line is known as SV, uh, a hyperplane. And SVM performs classification of data uh, by creating uh, an uh, hyperplane that optimally separates data points into two categories. Uh, this is one category, this is another category. All the crosses, this cross is one category, these dots are another category. How they are uh, segregated by means of this hyperplane. All right. So, SVM is all about creating these hyperplanes and SVM could be implemented for two different kinds of data. Uh, one is uh, 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 continuous data. Continuous data means uh, uh, you have 1, 2, 2.5 like this numeric data. Another one is uh, categorical data. Categorical data means uh, uh, yes category, no category. When support vector machine is applied into categorical data, it is known as SVM, support vector machine. When it is applied to continuous data, it is known as uh, regressor, means support vector regression. This is support vector regression. It is applied to classification as well as uh, regression problems. Regression problems are these problems that uh, uh, give the outcome as uh, a numeric value, a continuous value. For example, uh, predict, predict, prediction of marks. Marks are what? 90, 80. This is continuous value or your prediction of uh, rainfall, uh, how much rainfall would occur in a particular season. That is also a continuous uh, outcome uh, or prediction of uh, house prices, prediction uh, where the outcome is any numeric data, or continuous data. It is, uh, uh, comes under regression problems and regression analysis may be defined as a statistical method for determining relationship between variables. We have uh, variables. What are the variables? Uh, for example, in order to predict how much crop will be yielded, crop yield prediction. Crop yield prediction depends on uh, The several factors like uh, um, amount of rainfall, then uh, soil nature, then uh, um, seed quality. Consider only two for, for now, rainfall and soil. If these are the two features, two variables, that are used to predict the crop yield. Okay, how much crop would be generated based on the um, amount of rainfall and the uh, quality of soil. That is uh, determining the relationship between uh, variables through statistical methods. And then uh, regression, SVM for regression is also known as support vector regress, regression or regressor. And SVR, the cost function for building the model, ignores any training data that are close 
within the threshold e to model med prediction um, in order to predict uh, model has to be trained all right so then uh, there is a cost associated with the training and training data has to be supplied to it to the model model trains itself and then uh, 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 learns the uh, relationship and the uh, patterns and the features of the variables uh, later it, it would be doing that uh, analysis process or prediction process by um, by leveraging the model that has been generated uh, through the training the data all right this is about svn next is case based reasoning and learning case based reasoning and learning is all an approach for problem solving and learning uh, paradigms in artificial intelligence. It is uh, uh, to utilize a specific knowledge from previously experienced problem to solve the uh, present problem. Uh, you might have observed um, a doctor when uh, he is teaching his uh, juniors. Uh, suppose if there is a group of uh, five junior doctors um, associated with a senior doctor. How senior doctor explains the case to junior doctors? When he comes to a patient, uh, he uh, explains the problem to the, uh, all his juniors. Later he go to second patient, later he go to third patient. Consider now first and third patient are similar. Their cases are uh, quite close. Uh, therefore, what doctor would say, whatever I explained to you near patient number one, same thing apply to patient number three. And uh, this case is uh, uh, quite similar to case number one. Like that, doctor, um, uh, they sort of uh, give a comparison. Uh, and uh, uh, a, a, you know, a case, for the juniors to relate to the present uh, case, okay? So, uh, a problem or a situation refers to a case which was previously experienced, uh, situation and knowledge is retained and is used uh, later to solve the new problem. This is case-based learning. Same thing could be um, harnessed uh, for the development of AI systems. This AI system, is, suppose if this AI system has encountered a problem which is uh, which it has solved um, uh, thoroughly and uh, efficiently, if similar kind of problem uh, occurs, then what AI could do is AI could relate how AI could relate? Because AI is nothing but it is uh, all about uh, uh, relating the features. When AI uh, identifies similar features, it could uh, uh, apply the same solution or a solution which is uh, uh, modified to an extent which suits the new uh, case. So that is case-based reasoning and learning. Fundamentals of case-based re reasoning methods are to identify the current problem situation and to find a past case which is similar to the new one and uh, which will lead to the uh, case to suggest a solution to the current problem which is quite similar to the solution which was already uh, provided to the previous problem and evaluate the pro uh, proposed solution and update the system by learning from this experience. Case retrieval methods. Uh, the task of case re retrieval method is uh, 
to start with a partial problem description and continues until the best match among previously stored cases is found. This is retrieving. Like uh, in SQL, what do you do? Select a star from a student where, like you are retrieving the data from the database. Uh, in a similar manner, here you are retrieving the solution to a previously solved case. The subtasks of case retrieval include the following. Uh, first one, identification of the features, initial matching and searching, and finally selection. And the methods known for retrieving uh, cases are nearest neighbor, induction, knowledge guided, induction, template retrieval. These are the methods that could be uh, utilized in order to uh, retrieve uh, already solved the problem and its solution so that it could be uh, used to solve the new case. This is all about uh, case retrieval method. And then important uh, learning systems, existing systems are Samuel's checker program. Although these all have become obs obsolete, uh, but then because it is in your syllabus, uh, you can just uh, go through it. There is a game program known as Samuel Checker Program. There is another uh, uh, learning program known as Winston's Learning Program. Lex is a uh, concept learning program uh, for um, solving uh, certain type of problems. Hacker is another program. Prodigy, Prodigy is also a fun program. These are all learning uh, systems. Okay, that's all about this chapter. Tomorrow we will begin new chapter. Do you have any doubts in this chapter? Okay, let me note down. No, ma'am. Uh, is it clear to you all? Yes, ma'am. Uh, on the same day, if you could revise, it will help you in retaining and learning and understanding okay so today is 8 ai rule number 19 rule number 26 rule number 44 okay students then see you tomorrow thank you ma'am bye